over 100 different vaccines that are that are potential candidates for fighting the coronavirus. And as of May 11th, there were eight that are currently in clinical trials. And there are some very promising candidates that are emerging from those. Um, and when you mean eight clinical trials, what does that mean? So when you're thinking about a vaccine, it has to go through a series of clinical trials called phase one through phase four. So let's talk about the phases. So phase one is a small group of healthy volunteers where basically the goal of phase one is to find an effective dose. Phase two is a larger group, usually a few hundred people, where the goal is to really try to identify any safety signals that may emerge. Phase three is a much larger group, so several thousand people usually, where the goal is to really hone in on those safety signals and also to make sure you know that it's well tolerated and then finally phase four is post-marketing so after phase three usually when when people have gone through phase one through three they start to develop the vaccine for manufacture and distribution and then they continue to monitor it in phase four and make sure there was nothing else that was missed as more and more people receive the vaccine um and i remember when i did it did an interview with you before when it comes to um testing the FDA was letting people kind of expedite that process. Is that the same thing with these vaccines? Are they still being uh, given that like emergency use? Yeah, so the FDA has certainly given on multiple different vaccine candidates the promise that they would expedite their regulatory review. So as you can imagine, normally vaccine development takes somewhere between five to 10 to 15 years even for some vaccines. And because of the gravity of the situation, the FDA has certainly stepped up their efforts to review things much more quickly. In addition, a lot of companies are trying to come up with novel ways to really try to bypass phase one and go straight to phase two. So let me give you an example. They're using vaccines that have been used in other applications, such as the polio vaccine or the BCG vaccine. Now we know those vaccines have been around for a long time. The BCG vaccine vaccine has been around for over a hundred years. And so we know that it's safe. We know that it's well tolerated. So the only question we really have to ask ourselves is, does it work against the coronavirus? So you can really skip phase one, so to speak, and really kind of go to phase two or phase three very quickly with those types of vaccines. And similarly with vaccines that were developed for other diseases such as SARS or MERS that may never have really been used or tested because those viruses went away, those can certainly be used as well because there's data that those may already be safe. There have been phases when people have really tried to expedite vaccine development, but not on this magnitude, because obviously, you know, the, the impact of the current pandemic is so dramatic that the degree to which we're, make, we're willing to make shortcuts and fast track things has also been impacted. Now, remember, though, everything in science is a balance. It's a push pull. And one of the problems with fast tracking things too much, especially with respect to vaccine development, is that if you miss a small signal, a small signal for safety in these clinical trials and then you give it to millions or billions of people you're going to amplify that signal and you could really create more harm than good and one of the first principles in medicine is first do no harm so we really want to find something that's safe and then a secondary goal is of course to make sure that it works before we start giving it out to people another challenge in vaccine development that's really going to come in the COVID-19 pandemic is vaccines for children because that is one age group where you just necessarily don't want to cut corners, and you would like to have some longer term data, such as in young adults like teenagers, before you start to give it to children um, and really think about administering it in a widespread fashion to young children. But again, with this pandemic, we're going to have to think about really the balance of getting something out there very quickly, balanced against the risk of rushing too much and missing the safety signal. So you mentioned how long does a vaccine just take between five to 10 years, you said? Usually, yeah, some vaccines can take five to 10 years. Yep. And that's from preclinical work. So meaning uh, the concept of the vaccine testing it in animals to phase one through three to actually manufacturing and developing because the manufacturing and developing process itself can also take several months, especially if you're talking about manufacturing, you know, billions of doses, how to distribute those to all parts of the world. Um, and then, of course, phase four monitoring, which is the post-marketing surveillance. So all of those can take several years to happen and usually do take several years. So we have made dramatic progress in the current pandemic with really trying to shorten that timeline. Now, the goal of vaccines is really two. The first is an individual level protection. So it actually trains your immune system on how to fight the virus. And that's how a vaccine works. But the second is actually community level protection. So one of the benefits of vaccines is that they actually confer something 
something called herd immunity, which means that if you belong to a herd or a group of people where at least a certain number, a threshold of them have achieved immunity through vaccination, then you are protected just by being part of that group because they can't bring the vaccine to you. And in this current coronavirus um, epidemic, that threshold is about 60 to 70 percent. So we need about 60 to 70 percent of people to have immunity to this to this virus, either through infection, which is not ideal, or through vaccine, which is really what we want. And that in and of itself will actually start to protect the rest of us and slow the spread of the virus. Let's talk about the two front runners out of the company. So the first is one that just reported out yesterday called Moderna, which is a mRNA vaccine, a messenger RNA vaccine. It's a fancy type of vaccine, but basically their phase one trial was very promising. And what it showed was that the vaccine is safe. So most people had no reactions at all at the low or medium dose. At the high dose, they had muscle aches or pains for about a day, like you sometimes do with the flu vaccine. And they showed that it was effective. So they showed that eight people in the vaccine trial actually made what are called neutralizing antibodies, which is what we're looking for in terms of an effective immune response. And there were high levels of these neutralizing antibodies at the same level as you would have if you had the infection and recovered. So it's the first glimpse that something is safe and efficacious in terms of a vaccine trial and it's working in humans. Now they just entered their phase two study and they're actually planning on starting the phase three study in July. So they're optimistic that in a few months from July, they'll have the results of the phase three study and then they'll be able to start distributing. The second candidate is the Oxford vaccine, which is also getting a lot of attention. And they actually started a phase two trial as well with greater than 500 participants in April. And they're uh, representatives are actually saying that there's a greater than 80% chance that this is going to be successful. In fact, they're so confident that this is going to be successful that they've already started manufacturing some of that vaccine even before the results of the clinical trial are available. And this is based on data from rhesus monkeys, from monkeys that they injected with the vaccine and then exposed to the virus and tested them. But they're saying they would be able to have something available to distribute as early as September. So one company kind of end of the year, the other company is early as September. And Dr. Fauci, as you've heard, has said multiple times that in an optimistic timeline, we're looking at early next year, uh, meaning January of 2021, before the vaccines are available to be put into somebody's arm. So even if these results are kind of available this fall, that manufacturing distribution and administration will take a little bit of time as well. Great.